Hey everyone, it's Will here from Single Track Magazine and SingleTrackWorld.com and welcome to this ride review of Canyon's new carbon fibre trail bike. To begin with, we're going to have a bit of a chat about what this bike is, where it sits in the Canyon lineup and what makes it special. And then we're going to go into some detail about how it actually rides on the trail. And finally, I'm going to tell you what I liked and what I didn't like about this bike and whether this is something that should be on your shopping list for your next trail bike. Now the bike next to me here is the 2019 Canyon Neuron CF. It is Canyon's carbon fiber trail bike and it sits between the Lux 100mm Travel Cross Country Race Machine and the 150mm Travel Spectral All Mountain Bike. The Neuron CF sits somewhere in the middle with 130mm of squish at either end and it's either built with 29 inch wheels for the medium and larger frame sizes or 27.5 inch wheels for the extra small and small frame sizes. Now the Neuron CF joins the existing Neuron AL in the Canyon full suspension lineup. The Neuron AL of course has a full aluminium frame. The Neuron CF, which stands for carbon fibre, has a full carbon fibre frame set. Claimed weight on this frame is around 2.9 kilos with the shock for a medium Neuron CF frame. Now that is quite a bit heavier than the Lux SLX frame which is claimed to weigh around 2.1 kilos. Just looking at it though, you can tell the priority here has been to build a robust frame that's designed to last. It's got a plump tapered head tube, a large hexagonal shaped down tube and big boxy chain stays as well. Now aside from the carbon fibre frame, the biggest difference between the Neuron CF over the Neuron AL is the different suspension design. This is called the triple phase suspension platform and you will have seen it on other Canyon models including the Lux and the Spectral. Compared to the Neuron AL, Canyon has flipped that rear shock to sit underneath and parallel with the top tube. Not only does it allow for a healthy amount of standover clearance, it also provides room to fit a water bottle cage inside the mainframe. There's some really nice details on this frame including that composite shock yoke which drives the rear shock but also has external wings that wrap around the seat stay pivot to give it a really clean integrated look. You've got sealed cartridge bearings at all pivot points and Canyon's also added these neat little bearing covers which aside from giving it a really clean look also provides an extra barrier against water and mud from getting towards the bearings. Some other really neat but practical features on this frame it comes with a threaded bottom bracket shell and that actually differentiates the Neuron CF from the Lux and Spectral which both use press fit bottom brackets. There's the integrated protection unit up at the headset and that's designed to prevent over rotation of the handlebar so that the shifter and brake levers don't scratch your lovely carbon fibre top tube. You do get a pretty large range of movement with the IPU, certainly enough that it's never an issue on the trail and if you do have a really hard crash the two bolts that mount the bump stop to the top tube they're actually hollow and designed to break away in the event of a really hard crash. We've also got a really neat system for managing the cables on this bike. Canyon routes the cables externally on the Neuron CF frame, but very cleverly they're tucked away underneath this down tube tunnel. And this is three plastic bolt-on plates which are designed to capture and protect the cables. It gives it a really clean integrated look like you get with internal cable routing. But if you do need to work on the cable, say if you need to replace a gear cable or a brake hose, you just undo those plastic plates and it gives you access to the cables underneath. As well as giving it a clean look, those plates give a little bit of extra protection to the carbon fibre down tube. Also neat but practical is the Quixel rear through axle on this frame. Rather than requiring a tool to undo this, there is a hidden lever inside the end of the axle and you just pull that out and you can wind or unwind the axle as needed. Very, very clean and works very, very well without having a big ugly lever sticking out the back of the bike. Now there's one other hidden feature on this frame that you might not know about, and that's the fact that you can bolt on a front derailleur. Now I mention this because the two by compatibility does appear to have limited tire clearance and chainring clearance. For a one by setup, 32 is the biggest chainring you can run on this bike. As for the rear tire, Canyon states an official maximum width of just 2.4 inches. Now I did try a few different tires in the back of this frame and the biggest I was able to fit was a 2.6 inch Maxxis Recon. It didn't have a load of clearance though and it's not something I'd recommend, particularly if you ride in muddy conditions. Given how popular these high volume 2.5 to 2.6 inch tires are getting, it does seem like a bit of a missed opportunity on Canyon's behalf. Now the specific model that I've been testing here is the Neuron CF 9.0 SL and it sits right in the middle of a five bike lineup. 
Despite it being two steps down from the top of the range model, the 9.0 SL is still specced really nicely. There's a Fox performance level suspension package on this bike with the excellent 34 float on the front and a float DPS shock on the back. We've got Reynolds TR309 wheels. These are carbon fiber wheels, which is very impressive for a bike at this price point. They're running seal bearing hubs, straight pull spokes, and a four pull free hub mechanism in the back, which delivers 36 points of engagement. The rims themselves are 30 millimeters wide internally. They've got quite a boxy profile and they're set up tubeless out of the box with tape and valves included. They're supporting a pair of Maxxis Forecaster tires. Now these measure at 2.35 inches wide and they're quite a high volume, fast rolling tire. Now because they're on the thinner side, it does mean you need a bit more pressure in them to stop them from kind of squirming about on the trail. I end up running them at about 23 PSI on the front, 26 PSI on the back. Though through testing, I did end up changing the front tire to a bigger 2.6 inch specialized purgatory. So I was finding the traction on the forecaster, particularly on the front tire, to be a little lacking on rough, rocky terrain. I've got a set of SRAM Guide R brakes here, which have performed pretty well throughout the test. Though early on, they did need a very thorough bleed to remove some air bubbles that were causing excessive lever throw. Since bleeding, they've been a lot more solid, though as the pads have worn down, that lever throw is increasing and the levers are getting closer in towards the grips as they're engaged. They also lack a little bit of that deep stroke power that you get from the Guide RS and RSC brakes because you don't have a linkage in there driving the piston. With the stock organic brake pads though, they've been pretty quiet and pretty unassuming throughout the test. Very few complaints about the Fox Transfer dropper post, though the seat tube on this frame is too long. At 445 millimeters for a medium, it's quite a bit longer than what you'll see on a Trek Fuel EX, a Giant Trance 29, or a Specialized Stump Jumper ST. That last frame actually has a 410 millimeter seat tube, which is quite a bit shorter than this one. The problem I've encountered is that even with the collar of the dropper post slammed down into the frame as far as it'll go, the current saddle height is just a fraction too tall for my optimum pedaling position. Now, if you've got longer legs, that's not gonna be a problem, but because of this long seat tube, it does minimize the flexibility with being able to upsize on the Neuron CF frame. Up at the front of the cockpit, we have Canyon's own handlebar and stem. This is a 760 millimeter wide riser bar on here, which by today's standards is on the narrow side. And likewise, the 60 millimeter stem is a little bit long. The length actually works pretty well on this bike, though I did have to flip the stem upside down to bring the grips down a little bit lower. And I did end up removing all of the spaces to slam the stem down and get the cockpit a little bit lower at the front. Likewise, the geometry on this bike is fairly non-radical. It's neither super slack nor super long. We've got a 67.5 degree head angle on the front, a 74.5 degree effective seat angle, and the reach on the medium frame that I'm riding here is 433 millimeters. Once you get it out onto the trail though, it all adds up to a bike that's comfortable, easy to ride, and with very few surprises in the handling. Canyon has tuned the kinematics on the triple phase suspension platform to provide pedal efficiency without having to resort to loads of compression damping on the rear shock. As a result, the float DPS shock has quite a light compression and rebound tune, and it's designed to be run anywhere between 27 to 30% sag. I ended up somewhere in the middle with 190 PSI in this rear shock to support my 70 kilo riding weight, and that gave me around 28% sag. Because of the lightly tuned shock, I had to run quite a lot of rebound damping to stop the bike pogoing around, so I ended up three clicks off full slow for the rebound dial. I set up the fork a little bit on the firmer side to balance with the rear suspension design. So I put 75 PSI in the air spring, set the rebound five clicks off full slow, and I ran the low speed compression a little bit firmer than halfway, about three to four clicks. With that firm suspension design and that nice stiff carbon fiber frame, the Neuron CF has a really sporty ride quality. It's not super aggressive, but it's quite fun to ride and it's easy to maneuver as well. It's got loads of natural pedal efficiency built into it, so you can run that rear shock fully open without need to toggle it into the trail or firm positions. Admittedly on looser, more technical climbs, the rear tire can spin out a bit more and the firm suspension design means you do get bounced around a little more as well. So you do have to pick a smoother line on your way up, but overall it's quite efficient and you're gonna arrive at the top with plenty of energy for the descents. Now turning the bike around and heading down similarly rocky technical descents, the Neuron CF does bounce and ping around a little bit. The suspension design isn't the plushest around, 
And I've also been testing a Trek Fuel EX and Giant Trance 29 lately. And compared to those two bikes, the Neuron CF isn't quite as planted and the rear suspension isn't quite as plush either. I did try reducing pressure in the rear shock and increasing the sag, which did give me a slightly smoother feel to the suspension, but it did mean I was much more likely to bottom out the suspension and also clip pedals on roots and rocks on the trail. I did try adding volume spaces to increase progression and reduce the chance of that bottom out from happening in the first place, but because the middle of this travel is already quite firm and supportive, adding volume spaces made it really firm and actually quite uncomfortable to ride. In the end, I found the best setup was to leave the stock volume spacer inside, run the compression wide open, and just run a little less sag with a little more pressure inside the rear shock. Set up like that, it isn't the plushest bike in the world, but the suspension is very effective. It doesn't blow through the middle of the travel like some suspension designs can do. And that gives you a really good responsive feel through the pedals and it also gives you plenty of feedback coming through from the trail. On smoother trails, this is really advantageous and the Neuron CF gives you loads of return on your pedaling and handling inputs. I think in general, this is more of a wheels on the ground kind of trail bike. If you're a smoother rider, you will be able to get away with a lot on the Neuron CF, but I would recommend that jumpier and more aggressive riders should steer towards the Spectral in the Canyon range. On faster and steeper descents, I did find the front end of the Neuron CF to be a little bit wriggly, and you do need more concentration on the grips to make sure that front wheel continues to point where you need it to. I do think a slightly longer reach and therefore a longer front center would help give this bike a bit more stability for those descents. Of course, I wasn't able to test that, but what I did do was I did change the fork offset. The standard fork has 130 mil travel and a 51 millimeter offset, and I replaced it with the same travel fork with a 44 millimeter offset. Now that shorter offset increased the trail measurement by putting the steering access a little bit further forward than the tire contact patch and that did calm down the steering at high speed. I did find it was more stable with more damping to the steering and a slightly more stuck down feeling to the front tire. It gave a bit more confidence at higher speeds and particularly when descending down steeper trails. Now the trade-off with the shorter fork offset is it does make the bike a bit harder work to negotiate around tighter trails, particularly at slower to medium speeds. So there was a trade-off there, but it was interesting to test nonetheless. Also worth noting is that this frame will actually accommodate a slightly longer 140 millimeter travel fork. I think it'd be cool to see Canyon offer the Neuron CF in a sort of pumped up Evo spec, perhaps with a 140 millimeter travel reduced offset fork, some chunkier tires and a bigger handlebar and shorter stem. I think that'd be really popular, particularly in the UK market. Right, so three things on this bike that I think could be improved. The first, I've already touched on it before, that seat tube is too long. It needs to be shorter, not only for people with short legs like me, but also to provide more flexibility for riders to change frame size depending on the reach that they want. The second thing I think could be improved about this bike would be a slightly longer reach or the reduced offset fork. Either of those two is gonna help improve descending stability on this bike, which really is beneficial for all riders across all skill levels. And the last thing is the tires. In particular, this bike is crying out for a more aggressive front tire than the Maxxis Forecaster. Right, so three things that I loved about this bike. The first of which is the efficient and stable suspension design. You really don't have to touch the compression switch on that rear shock. You can leave it wide open all the time and it will pedal really well with really good responsiveness and plenty of feedback through the middle of the travel. The second thing is this beautiful carbon fiber frame. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It's very clean, very nicely integrated, but at the same time, very practical too, which I like. And lastly, the value for money you get with this spec package is really, really good. In particular, the Fox suspension package and the Reynolds carbon fiber wheels are real standouts on this bike. So overall, what did I think of the Canyon Neuron CF? Well, I think this is a really solid trail bike. It's comfortable, it's easy to ride, and there are very few surprises from its handling. In general though, it's more sporty than naughty. If you're after a bike that you can jump on a lot and ride really aggressively, the Spectral is still the choice in the Canyon range for an aggro trail bike. If you value pedal efficiency and climbing ability though, the Neuron is a really good looking, well-priced trail bike that has a very broad range of appeal. Now, if you'd like to read the full review of this 2019 Canyon Neuron CF 9.0 SL, make sure you jump on singletrackworld.com to read the detailed review. If you've got any questions for me about this bike, drop them into the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And as always, sign up to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page for plenty more videos coming your way. Until then, we'll see you next time, guys. Mm -hmm.
Toot-toot.